Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what you should feed your birds, a kind of parrot diet guide. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what birds feed on in the wild, but we can do our very best under human care to give them the best possible healthy diet. It's important to note that not all birds are going to be feeding on the same things. There are such a variety in all the different parrot species. For example, Eclectus have a completely different diet to most other parrots, so they won't necessarily apply in this video, but I just wanted to point that out. African greys need a slightly higher diet in calcium. Macaws need a diet slightly higher in fats. And of course, different birds at different life stages are going to need slightly different levels. Another interesting species to know are lorikeets and lorries. Generally speaking, their diet is gonna be 70% nectar, which is very different to most other species. So we're gonna kind of put eclectuses and lorikeets to one side and kind of focus on more other parrot species. And we are going to talk about the different elements in the diet, what's good, what's bad, what you should and shouldn't do. Now, if you don't know already, I have two cockatiels and three green cheek conyers. And generally speaking, I give them fresh bits in the morning and then more drier ingredients in the evening so they can be left in overnight. Because if you leave fresh bits in overnight, they can go a bit gross. And if talking about measurements, I'd say they get about two teaspoons of goodies in the morning and two teaspoons of goodies in the evening per bird. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the different components of what they get as we go through this video. And as I said, every bird is gonna be different. If you're not sure how much you should be feeding your bird, uh, you can consult your avian veterinarian, uh, but also it's really important to be weighing your bird as well and checking their keel bone if possible. If you're not sure how to do that or what I'm talking about, I do have a whole video on signs of a healthy bird and how to help check your bird. So make sure you go and check out that video after this one. So first of all, let's talk about vegetables. Now vegetables should be the main component in your bird's diet. Now that may not be what you have been told. You might have been told that you should feed a mostly pelleted diet or perhaps back in the day a cedar diet, but actually a vegetable based diet is the healthiest for your bird. Now of course there are going to be some unsafe vegetables. So I'm gonna put loads of different resources down in the description so you can go and check out what's safe and what isn't after this video. But in order to feed your bird vegetables, you can create them, you know, big chunks of vegetables and things like that. But if you want to get a really good variety, I recommend making chop. You want to include three green vegetables into your chop and then three other colored vegetables, such as red, orange, yellow, or purple, and then an extra as well. This could be a spice like ginger, it could be herbs, just something else to round up the chop. And all of these lovely ingredients with the different colors are going to be getting a wide variety of vitamins and minerals for your bird. Now, if you didn't know, birds are often deficient in vitamin A under human care because they're fed a more commercial and processed diet. But when you're feeding fresh, it's really easy to get the balance of nutrition when you know how to do it correctly. There's also lots of parrot cookbooks available on the market, which are really full of information as to how to balance the nutrition. Again, I've got them down in my Amazon store. So if you wanted to go and see which ones are available currently, all the info is gonna be down in the description. Now with my chop, I create a chop once a week and that stays in an airtight container in my fridge and that lasts my five birds for pretty much the entire week. But uh, some people will freeze their chop and for some birds that's okay, but for my birds they prefer a much crunchier chop. And also if your chop goes quite wet, it can actually trigger hormonal behavior because it kind of has that consistency of regurgitated kind of goodies. So just be really mindful of how you're presenting your chop to your birds. And you can actually add different ingredients to kind of soak up that moisture like dried flowers, chia seeds and things like that, which I'll talk about later in the video. Now often seen as going hand in hand with vegetables are fruits. Now, they're lovely in color and we think of fruits as being healthy. However, most fruits have quite a high sugar content. And when you already have a permanent three-year-old child essentially back there as a parrot, because that's generally how they behave in their uh, mental capacity, if you're adding loads of sugar into the mix, that is a recipe for hyperactivity, potential behavioral uh, problems like screaming and undesirable behaviors, potentially even plucking as well. Some birds who have a really high sugar diet can have lots of different sensitivities. So I'd recommend if you're gonna be feeding your birds fruit to feed it about three times a week. Now, an exception to this would be birds who are free flyers, who are fully trained um, through a mentor or professional and they are exuding so much energy that they actually need to get some of that energy back from their food. That's totally fine and I think that's great. But if you've just got a bird at home and you're kind of flying them in your home I recommend fruit about three times a week and also proper portion size as well you don't want to give them a whole apple three times a week because that's quite a lot so give them little chunks and you could also use it as training treats as well for example Scampi here uh, my green cheek Konya he goes crazy for banana chips so they are a top tier treat for him and they're reserved just for training we don't sort of free feed them in his food next I wanted to touch upon seed now seed gets quite a bad rap because 
throughout parrot keeping history it's kind of seen that seed should be the main diet and over lots of research we've discovered that actually that's really bad to feed just seed as the main diet however you can use seed as training traits for example my cockatiels love millet my conyers really like safflower seeds sunflower seeds hemp seeds and that's okay for training treats you just don't want to be piling loads of that into their main diet because they're not going to be getting a broad range of nutrition from those seeds I should also point out that parrots are hookbills which means that they can take off the shells of those seeds which is why you don't need to be giving them oyster shell or grit or anything like that that you might see marketed for parrots they don't need it they are fully capable of taking the shell off the seed which is why they don't need oyster shell and grit and actually if you do feed that it could cause some crop impaction so best avoid it I'd also like to point out that a lot of people put in a whole millet spray or treat bells and sticks into their birds' cages because they think they're being uh, really kind to their birds and they're giving them loads of treats. But actually that's not really great for your birds because if you're reserving those kind of treats for training and they're getting free fed those treats in their cage, they're less likely to have that training motivation. So bin the treats, sticks and bells or you know put them out for the wild birds if you don't want to throw them in the bin and just reserve those top treats for training sessions and make sure that they are having their kind of vegetables and other components I'll talk about in their cages to eat so they're getting a nice healthy diet with treats on the side. Now I'm not sponsored but I did want to mention a couple of companies because I think it's worth mentioning that there are some healthier seed mixes on the market, things that are blended and they have no sunflower seeds and no peanuts and things like that. Uh, the one in the UK that I'm really loving at the moment is Squeaky Beak and uh, they've got a really wide variety of um, seed mixes which are complementary to obviously a mostly vegetable based diet and I thought I'd give them a shout out because I really really like them. They're a small business as well and we love supporting small businesses and in the US there is a company called China Prairie and they have a great range as well so it's kind of something for everyone if you live somewhere else in the world drop me a comment and I will try and recommend some other places for you to get some kind of more healthier uh, seed mixes for your birds next I wanted to talk about sprouting now lots of people are kind of a bit worried about starting sprouting because it does require a bit of effort but practice does make perfect and sprouts are a fantastic addition to your birds diet because they provide lots of healthy proteins now a lot of commercial based diets are deficient in protein and birds do need them because their feathers are actually made out of protein and of course protein is one of the building blocks of the body so we want to be making sure that our birds are getting healthy sources of protein now the great thing about soaking and sprouting is it can actually make other foods much healthier so when you actually sprout a seed grain or legume you're actually using up the fat reserve in that seed grain or legume so it makes the actual product lower in fat and much healthier for your birds and also much more bioavailable because sprouts are essentially a living food it's something that they would eat in the wild the little shoots from the ground it's really great to include this natural food into your birds diet now if you've never tried sprouting before I do have a whole video on it so you can check that out after this video as I said practice does make perfect it takes a few goes to get right but once you know what you're doing it's so good to include in your birds diet. If you'd like to try a really easy one just to get started and try it out, you can get some raw buckwheat and you can soak that just for 15 minutes in some cold water, rinse it out and then you can feed it straight to your birds and that would be a really nice treat for them. Now if you find it sprouting really really tricky or you really don't know where to get started and you just want to try it out, there are actually some commercial mixes on the market that are dehydrated pre-sprouted mixes and these are really healthy for your birds and uh, I actually use it with my birds normally during the summer because sometimes the sprouts go a bit funny in the summer because it's so hot so they go off quicker but I wanted to show you this one, this is by Happy Bird UK or in the US it's the best bird food and this is the Seed Delicious pre-sprouted tiny beaks mix and these are brilliant as I said they're already sprouted but they're dehydrated so they lock in pretty much all of the nutrition from the sprouting process and uh, your birds can enjoy these and see what they think about sprouts as well. I wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like to sprout certain things and how long they take so I thought I would just prepare a few bits here so they're all ready at the same time so I can show you. So over on this side I've got buckwheat so this is the dried version and this is it when it's just been soaked for 15 minutes so you can see it's kind of swelled up in size but it doesn't look too different and that's fine and you can actually feed the buckwheat after it's soaked for just 15 minutes so that's one that's really easy to do if you're in a bit of a pinch with time and it's in a really easy way to get some healthy protein into your birds because they do need healthy protein every single day. The next one is quinoa. I think most of us know what quinoa looks like when it is in its kind of dry form. And this is it sprouted over, I'd say about two days. Um, you can feed it sprouted over one and the tails are a little bit shorter, but this is what it looks like. And all those little tails there are really fun for the birds to chew. And again, another nice healthy source of protein. So buckwheat is just 15 minutes soaked and then you can serve. Quinoa is two hours soaked and then you just rinse as you would sprouting 
and it takes usually one to two days and then onto the mung beans which is what they look like dry and then when they are sprouted which usually takes about three days it can really depend on your climate to be honest sometimes it takes less sometimes it takes more um, but you can see they're little sort of green jackets I guess I don't skins I don't know what you call them they come off and they create these beautiful little sprouts with these long tails and uh, this is what they look like and these are again super healthy they taste a little bit sweet so that might be a good way of enticing your bird if they're a bit of a sweet beak but overall sprouting once you get the hang of it it's really easy to do but let's talk about nuts next now generally speaking nuts are a favorite for most birds but of course they're very high in fat so when we're offering these we want to be offering them as training treats not necessarily as part of your bird's diet now you may be able to hear olive snuffling and uh, she's talking to me and it's very distracting but we're going around. she's dancing as well apparently because why not why not just have a little boogie so with my birds for some reason they're a bit strange and they don't actually really like nuts uh, which is very unusual for birds because most birds will really enjoy nuts so what i do is i actually blend my nuts in a nutribullet and i then just kind of sprinkle it over the top of some of their treat foods so this is just a blend of organic mixed nuts that i got from buy whole foods online and just popped it in the nutribullet blended it up and then i can just give them a little sprinkle because there are some healthy fats in nuts but um, we don't want to be feeding them as a bulk part of our bird's diet now in order to make nuts a bit more bioavailable and uh, more easy to digest you can actually soak those as well kind of like the soaking and sprouting so if you soak nuts generally for about eight hours but of course if you uh, purchase any of these parrot cookbooks they'll give you loads of information on each individual nut um, you can then rinse those and then feed them to your birds and it just unlocks lots of that nutrition for your birds so they're going to be getting more out of that nut if you were just feeding it dry one other point to make on nuts, uh, let's talk about peanuts. Uh, peanuts aren't great for your birds uh, for a variety of reasons. They haven't got a lot of nutritional potential in there, but also quite often the actual shell of the peanut um, can harbour fungus and mould. So that's obviously never good for your birds and there have been a lot of cases of that, so best avoided. And also, did you know that peanuts are actually a legume, not a nut? I thought I'd just throw in that little random fact. Wouldn't recommend them, um, but yeah, stick clear of those. And there are loads of other nuts that are really great for your birds. So next I wanted to talk about flowers. Now most people don't always consider flowers as part of a bird's diet, but they're actually very natural for birds, it's something they'd eat in the wild, and they have loads of nutritional benefits. Now my boyfriend David did make a whole video on flowers for birds and some of the health benefits, so I'll leave a link down in the description. But you can feed fresh flowers, dry flowers, just make sure wherever you're getting them from, they are pesticide free and best organic, because you don't want any of those going into your bird system, of course. You could actually feed flowers as a tea. Now the one that we have in the UK, I talk about it pretty much every single video is Polly's Natural Parrot Boutique. We love her teas, she's got lots of varieties and she's also just brought out some um, actual foraging trays full of different flowers uh, which is really awesome and they look great and I'm hopefully going to get some of those shortly. But uh, brewing teas, whether it's cold brew, having them slightly warm or just using the wet flowers in your bird's chop is a really great way of providing natural foraging um, opportunities great health benefits and as I said it's quite comparable to some of the things that they would find in the wild so definitely try and include flowers in the US if you're looking for teas like this I'd recommend Greywood Manor Teas or Posh City Pets and of course if you live somewhere else in the world let me know and I'll see what I can do for you and just another quick point on flowers there are some that are toxic for your birds and plenty that are safe so please make sure you're checking multiple safe lists for your birds just to make sure that you're giving them the right things I like that scampi. Is he nice? <laughs> Why sharing it with you? Yeah. So moving on from flowers, we're going to talk about herbs now. Again, David's got a whole video on this if you wanted a bit more information. But herbs are another great addition to your bird's diet. Again, something very natural that they can eat with plenty of health benefits. Herbs are also brilliant because you can make them into toys. You can bundle them up and pop them in your bird's cage for them to shred. You can include them in the chop. Things like oregano are actually natural antibacterial. So if you pop them in the chop, it's going to make your chop last a bit longer. And the other brilliant thing about herbs is they are a great kind of bridging tool between a slightly unhealthier diet and more of a diet based on vegetables because they're very sweet, they're really fun to shred and chew, so uh, birds really get interested in them and it can make them more likely to enjoy kind of uh, green things and vegetables. <laughs> Thank you. 
And if you've been watching this whole video thinking, my bird won't touch vegetables, I can't feed vegetables, I do have a whole video on how to train your bird to enjoy vegetables. There's loads of different tips in there. And they actually worked with all of our birds, especially our green cheek conyers who are all rescues and came to us on an all seed diet. They now actively choose their vegetables and fresh foods over their seed. So that I think is a testament in itself. So go and check out that video after this one as well. Now, once again, my boyfriend David, Wargaming Parrot, does have a whole video on this topic, so I'm gonna to touch on it briefly. But spices are also really brilliant for your birds, similar to flowers and herbs, loads of health benefits, but they're also really fun as well. Um, some of the benefits, for example, with cayenne pepper, which is a great spice to have in your first aid box, is it is a very, very mild painkiller. Now, of course, with any kind of veterinary or medical issues, go straight to your avian vet, but for very minor bumps and grazes and things at home, you can just sprinkle a little bit of cayenne pepper in their food and that will um, help them feel a little bit better about it. Now another favourite spice in this household are star anise. Now I don't really like the smell of it because it smells like licorice but it's the Connie's absolute favourite and the great thing about star anise if you've never seen them before they are kind of a star shape as you would expect and they make a brilliant foot toy and Olive will just sit there for ages just picking out the seeds chewing it up and she has a great time she's got a lot to say about star anise so spices are brilliant to add into your bird's diet and they add so much variety so uh, definitely go and check out David's video after this one and then you can find out a little bit more about some of the safe spices for your bird. I also briefly wanted to talk about eggs, specifically chicken eggs. You can feed those to your birds. You can um, scramble them in the microwave or in the pan with no oil or a bit of coconut oil if you need to use some because that is safe for birds as long as it's uh, raw and unprocessed. Um, but eggs can be a really great source of protein, a little treat, especially if your birds are molting because that's really hard on the bird's body. And uh, if you give them that little bit of extra protein, then that can help them and give them a real boost. And also, if your bird is being a little bit under the weather and they've already uh, seeked medical advice, uh, from an avian vet you can also give them some egg just to give them a little pick-me-up don't use any kind of oils or anything like that with your egg you want to keep it nice and plain no butter no salt um, but as I said it can be a really great treat you can boil them as well some people will include the eggshells within their eggs but it will depend on where you're getting your eggs from if they're organic it also depends on whether the eggs have been washed or treated in chemicals in the UK they're not they're absolutely fine um, but obviously in other places in the world there are different kind of food hygiene standards so just be really mindful and if you're not sure don't include the eggshells because obviously you want to be making sure that your birds are absolutely fine and if you are going to be including the eggshells grow them down to a very fine um, kind of almost like a dust because you don't want any kind of crop impaction and also they can be quite sharp so you don't want them to be hurting themselves if they are going to be consuming them but they're a brilliant source of calcium so you may want to include them within that scrambled or boiled egg. Now we've gone through the whole video and we haven't really spoken about pellets now you may be thinking you know why haven't you spoken about pellets um i don't use pellets as a huge part of my bird's diet if i am going to use pellets i use a very high quality one any other pellets i find unless there are very brand new ones that they are just full of filler ingredients that are not very healthy for your birds again i've made a whole video going into detail about what is good and bad about certain pellets but if you do feed pellets, have a look at the back on the ingredients list. You want to be avoiding soy, wheat, corn, maize, peanuts, sunflower seeds, anything like that. If they're in your bird's pellet, might not be the best pellet for your bird because if you think about it those are actually filler ingredients you see it a lot in the kind of dog and cat food market but they are not nutritionally complete for your birds so if you're feeding that as the bulk of the diet you're not going to be getting a lot of nutrition in there and you don't really want to be having that as the main part of your bird's diet which is why we always go for fresh foods instead also there are many pellets on the market which are very brightly colored they almost look like cereal and i've tried some of them and they taste like cereal as well which is very concerning you don't want to be having any kind of added sugars dyes salts anything like that in there for your bird as well and the thing with pellets as i kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video they kind of claim to be um, suitable for any bird but each species of bird has a very unique kind of um, dietary need so a pellet that's made for macaws will not necessarily be suitable for um, conures for example so you need to be really mindful but as I said we do sometimes include pellets maybe um, a bit of fun and forage or in the evening meal they get a few pellets as well as maybe some healthy seeds some spices flowers all kinds of goodies so just be really mindful if you are considering using pellets for your bird please do lots and lots of research as to whether that pellet is a high quality pellet as I said if you'd like to know a bit more about pellets and all the different kinds of aspects of them I do have a video which is going to be down in the description for you to watch
Well, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope that's given you some ideas of what you can include into your bird's diet, things to avoid, things that should be a staple in your bird's diet. If you have any questions at all about diet, please leave them down below. I'd love to chat to you and help you make great decisions for your feathered friend. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.